Welcome back everybody. This is our solution to problem 7 from my spring 2020 final exam and it is in some ways a continuation of problem 6. Uh, if you remember problem 6's solution you will recognize that we ended up with a Laplace transform of exactly, well, it was a little more than this function, but this was one of the, the key sum ends in it. Uh, and it was the one that caused us the most problems. Um, we used the method of partial fractions as a way of breaking up this, this fraction into two pieces, which we could then write as Laplace transforms. Um, the method of convolutions gives us an alternative approach. Not necessarily easier approach, but it's a, it's a different approach, which in other situations is going to have a lot of very practical applications. So in this problem, we've been asked to compute the value of y by using the convolution theorem. Right? That is, we want to identify this as the Laplace transform of a convolution. Uh, so let's see how we do that. Well, um, if we start with L of y equals 1 over s minus 2 times s squared plus 1, I can make the rather silly observation that this is the same as 1 over s minus 2 times 1 over s squared plus 1. But as silly as that observation is, it's, it's actually quite useful because I know that this first factor is the Laplace transform of e to the 2t. And I know that the second factor is the Laplace transform of sine of t. And now we can apply the convolution theorem. So that's what's going to happen here. The convolution theorem says if you have the product of two Laplace transforms, that will be the same thing as the Laplace transform of the convolution of the two functions. Now this is completely useless if you don't know what the convolution is, but at least we know we can write such a product as one Laplace transform. Because now we can take the inverse Laplace transform and I'll get y equals the convolution of e to the 2t and sine of t. Okay, well, like I said, if you don't know what the convolution is, then this is not actually a, a terribly useful answer to you. Um, but we happen to know what the convolution is. So the convolution of two functions will be the integral, and we, we're going to switch variables now using the conventional tau as our variable. We'll integrate from 0 to t. Right? So our answer right should be a function of t if we integrate with respect to tau. And we take the, the first function, e to the 2t, and we replace t by t minus tau. And then we take the second function, sine of t, and we evaluate it at tau. And then we multiply by d tau. All right, so this entire problem has reduced down to computing this one integral. Now, it's an exponential times a sine. This is classic place straight to use integration by parts. So let's give a name to this. Call this g prime of tau. Remember, this is a function of tau we're, we're dealing with. So g prime of tau is equal to e to the 2 times t minus tau times sine of tau. And we want to find an antiderivative, g of tau. So we're going to use integration by parts. And let's see. So with exponentials and trigs, yeah, I know a lot of people learn about this uh, L-I-A-T-E rule. Right, which oh, people have all sorts of mnemonics for it. Um, I've said this, you know, many, many times, even in these videos. I, I'm not really a huge fan of this mnemonic, um, mostly because in a lot of cases it, it doesn't actually matter which you make your your so-called u and your dv, and this is one of those cases. Uh, usually, the better uh, way to think about this, the better heuristic is which one would I rather integrate. Um, and with exponentials and trig functions, the truth is they're, they're both very easy to integrate. So, so I don't worry too much about it. Um, so I'm just, because they're written from left to right in this order, I'm going to put the exponentials as my so-called u, and the sine will be my dv. But something similar would work if I, if I did this in the other order. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a derivative. Now remember, this is a function of tau, so the derivative is with respect to tau which means when we use the chain rule here, 
I have to be cognizant of that minus sign. The derivative of t minus tau will be negative 1. So I'm going to end up with, okay, well, there's a 2 out here also. So we get negative 2 e to the 2 t minus tau. And then let's see, an antiderivative for sine will be negative cosine. All right, as is typical with this, we're going to do it one more time, and then we'll be able to play this, this i trick. So I take another derivative, and I'll get 4e to the 2t minus tau. And an antiderivative for negative cosine is negative sine. And at this point, I essentially have what I started with again, an exponential and a sine. Yeah, there's some constants. But I go into the box, and the constants aren't really going to matter. So the negative 4 will stay on the left. I'll move e to the 2t minus tau times sine of tau to the right. Now, if I take a derivative of negative 4, I get 0. And let's go back and uh, see. Let's see. Um, an antiderivative, well, that's what we were looking for, it was actually just our g. So we could call this g of tau if we like. Okay, we put our lines in. No lines inside the box. Plus, minus, plus. And so in the end, our g of tau, that's what we're looking for, equals, let's see, we have uh, an exponential in both of these pieces. So let's write um, an exponential e to the 2 t minus tau. And then what do I have? I have a negative cosine of tau. And actually, both of them are going to have negatives, right? So there's a negative and then negative, negative, negative. So I'll pull the negative out, make my life easier. So I have cosine of tau. And then we're going to have plus 2 sine of tau. Okay, and then down at the bottom, we have minus 4 times g of tau. Okay, we add the minus 4 g of tau to the left, which will give us 5 g of taus. Of course, now I'm just copying for a while. Just chomping at the bit so I can divide by 5. All right, so I divide by 5, and that will solve for g of tau. So g of tau is going to equal 1 over 5. Oh, there's a negative. e to the 2t minus tau. And then we have cosine of tau plus 2 sine of tau. Okay. And I guess we could copy this up. Because we wanted to write our answer up here. All right. So let's copy that in. And that might look a little big, so let's make that a little smaller. There we go. All right. Oh, we got an extra equal sign. We don't need that. Okay. So we have computed our antiderivative, which means we can come back now and compute our integral, and it will be just g of t minus g of 0. All right. What is g of t? Well, that's what happens when we evaluate this g function when tau equals t. When tau equals t, we're going to get a 0 in this exponential. So that, that's all going to go away. We'll get negative a fifth. Cosine of t. And then plus 2 sine of t. OK, how about minus g of 0? So well, the minus and this minus will make it into a plus. And now when we evaluate when tau is 0, we're going to get, OK, we have a 1 fifth. And then we have e to the 2t. Then we'll have cosine of 0, which is a 1, plus twice sine of 0. But that's just 0. So actually, this 1 plus 0 is 1, and we don't need anything else. OK. And uh, if we wanted, of course, we notice there's a, a 1 fifth that we could we could pull out. Um, but I'm not too, too concerned about that. Uh, so this seems like a pretty good place to, to stop. We have actually found our expression for y by using the convolution theorem.